What's going on, y'all? Welcome to my podcast. It's just different with Ty, where I talk about sports, social, political issues, you name it, everything under the sun. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel and please leave all comments in the section below. Also hit the notification bell so you can be updated on the hottest, latest, newest videos because I'm coming with that fire. And if you want to come on here and have a debate with me, I may entertain it pending what it is, but you better know what you're talking about because I ain't playing no games with you. Now, I reviewed the curriculum to the advanced African-American history um, course. And I have a lot more things to say now. There's some things that information I jotted down. Some things I ain't I'm, I'm not too sure, still sure about some things I don't really agree with. You know, we can agree to disagree and we're going to get into that. Let's go. Welcome to It's Just Different with your host, Ty. Okay. 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 So I made a video talking about the governor of Florida, how I felt at the time that he didn't really want black kids to learn in his state. Um, I had little information on the course because nothing was given at that time. I received it. I looked at it. I went over it two, three times <laughs> just to make sure. And uh, we're going to talk about some things and we're going to talk about something that I, you know, I, some things, honestly, I, I don't even feel should be in there, depending in what way, how they they'll try to teach the course. So I know now we're going to start off with, with some of the things I had issues with, right? Now, one of the things I had issue with, if you look in uh, topic 416, uh, black feminist literacy thought, the topic explores the literacy contributions of black feminists and womanist writers. Okay. And if you also go to the black uh, topic 413, they have the black feminist movement and womenism. And I had to look that up and I'm going to read this off, but I'm going to probably butcher some names. So don't get on me if I mispronounce these names. I don't know how they, you know, some of these people say their names. But when you go to topic 413 in this course, it's you know, about the black feminist movement and womenism. It says this topic explores the black feminist movement. The concept of womenism and approaches that center the unique everyday experiences of black women. Students may analyze a text such as the Kambahi River Collection Statement or an excerpt from writers such as, and excuse me, sister, if I mess up your name, Kahenji, Kahenji Yamahata Taylor. You know, I think that's who it is. That's how you pronounce her name. Um, and then when you look into it more, right, about the Kambahi River Collection was a black feminist lesbian organization that was active between 1974 and 1980. This intersectional group was created because there was a sense that both the feminist movement or civil rights movement didn't reflect the particular needs of black women and lesbian. Now, now that I read it and now that I got a full understanding of this subject right here, this topic, um, I'm kind of against it. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a, no, it's not a thing where I don't want women to be great. That's not what it is at all. As someone that studies history. I done enough research to realize that the feminist movement has pretty much hampered or tried to sabotage the black movement just by this saying right here. There was again, I'm gonna read this little part off right here. This intersectional group was created because there was a sense that both the feminist movement or civil rights movement didn't reflect the particular needs of black women and lesbians. So they letting you know that even when the civil rights was going on, 
they're making it seem that as if those activists didn't really want to include bl black women. That's how I'm taking it. That's how this is being perceived by me. And if you're an activist or the activist during those times, it's all about my struggle is your struggle. There is no, all right, well, you know, I'm going to do this over here and then you can take this out and have your thing going over there. I just feel like the feminist movement is, I feel the government basically came in and infiltrated the black liberation movement. Any, any black organization that want liberation for black people, I feel the government has done a good job at uh, being able to convince some black women that this, move, this movement of liberation isn't really about or doesn't even include you as a black woman. And I feel a lot of black women bought into that. Unfortunately, some black women may not know that they're being used as pawns. Some black women may not even care because they already adopted a mentality of I don't need this. I'm not getting this. I'm not getting that. Whatever their their, their past life was or, or, or what happened in their life trauma. I just I never agreed really with the feminist movement of today or any, probably any time. Now, does that mean that? I think um, black women can't be in a position of power. Absolutely not. I I, I don't I don't I I feel black women can de African women can definitely be in a position uh, position of power. As someone that studies a lot, you know, in African culture, all the African women that was running the ship, so to speak. All right. Now, I could just not really go in my bag, but I could just name a few just just off just off the top of my head. Um, if you talk about uh Shaka Zulu's uh mother, his mother, she was running the ship in their tribe, you know. Uh I, I can't think of her name, but I know it's definitely Shaka uh, Zulu's mother. If you look at uh uh Nanny of the Maroon in Jamaica, that um black woman, she was running ship. And the liberation and different things. If you look at a uh, queen, queen, right? Nefertiti, she was running a ship, queen hatches ship, right? Makeda, the queen of Sheba. Okay, um, the the women, the women in, um, and Sudan, con, con, I, I might mispronounce it, but forgive me, Kandakar, Kandakar women. Again, I might be pronouncing it, but some people might know what I'm saying, what I'm talking about. That that empire of, of all those women in, in Sudan, you know. So let and, and again, when they was running the ship, it wasn't yo. I'm a woman, yo. We just gonna look out for us, and that's it. We ain't get no respect from no men, from our black men. I didn't see nothing like that. If anybody got any type of historical documents when they was on it like that, saying yo, it's just a woman. A feminist movement. We don't care about the we getting ours because the men, the black men didn't, you know, try to look out for us. If y'all got anything like that, please show it to me and I have to do a part three <laughs> and talk about it, you know. So that's what it was. Now, this feminine movement is different. It's a whole different thing. It's it's nah. we ain't nah. I ain't black. We, we doing our joint because they feel like I said, I, I, I just think that the government did a great job at convincing some black women that is, you know, even these black men, this, this movement, this liberation movement is really not even about you. And even still, might I add, even in this feminist movement, there's still racism. Even in this feminine movement, there's still racism. Look at some of the, the founders of this feminist movement in America and, and look at some of the, the, the documentation to the things that they said, you know? So, Another issue that I had with was the black uh, queer studies because there wasn't really no real information left, you know, to explain what not so much how or, or, or not so much why 
is this a part of African American uh, history? But in what way are they trying to teach it? Are they trying to say that in the queer black queer studies? Are they trying to say that genetically black people are just prone to be gay? Like I I, I don't I don't know. Or are they saying that this the black queer studies the this movement was also something that was engineered by the government to try to, you know, um, dismantle the black family. Like, I, so I, I really don't know. So if it's that way, yeah, that, that maybe, you know, but we, we, we got to wait and see to hear in what way are they saying this? I have no clue. Another issue. And I don't want to say so much issues i'll just say it, it raises an eyebrow it has to be checked it has to you know raises an eyebrow that's better you know i still feel that these courses should be taught and maybe you might want to leave one a few you know a few things out of there that's just me the other issue the other eyebrow right that was raised was in table eight of the pen, of the plan, uh, pamphlet Films appearing on a high school. So basically, there's certain movies that they're going to show. Tw one of them is 12 Years a Slave. Another one was Roots. Another one was Amistad. And I'm like, here we go. Here we go again. Now, I know slavery is a, a big thing and probably the biggest thing in African-American history. Right? Right? Um, when the Europeans came, right? Or, or, or when the Europeans uh, uh, kidnapped us during the transatlantic slave uh, trade and everything else. Although there was African people already here before the Europeans came here. That's a whole nother story we're not even going to get into. But I have an issue because I, I said this. We have seen so many slave movies that we've been conditioned that all we are is slaves. So anything that we do of greatness in Africa, we like, we don't even know. We don't even want to know about it. We don't even want to have a connection to it. That's how a lot of African-American people are because they shove slavery history down our throats here in this country. You know, if there's any other African people in another country, is that the same way how you grew up or even now seeing that on TV? And yes, these things did happen, and it, but come on. Mix it up. Put something that there's other things in there that we did where it, you know, you can pick from to instead of keep on showing all these different slave movies. That's just my thing. That's just my thing. You know, they don't even have they don't even have um um Black Wall Street. I didn't see that in there. I even like Durham. How Durham, North Carolina, prospered. How so many other cities throughout um, uh, america so many black cities were prospering they're not even talking they're not even showing that in these movies they're showing the slave movies but whatever it is what it is now my biggest issue my biggest issue that is not in in this course that i felt should be and again i noticed when we talk about African American history, most black people, or at least black people even that I talk to, they talk from a sense of inventions, right? Inventions. Um, what the black people create, what did we create that was was able to contribute to society, the achievements, uh, different things of that nature. We don't talk about the other things that played a big hand and are a, a big part in African-American history. And one of the things that I feel like is not in that course, but should be is Pro. Yes. I know y'all thinking, Oh, why is that? Yes. Pro should be taught in this advanced African-American history course. If it was in there, I didn't see it. Maybe it's in there the, uh, in, in a, under a, a different name. But Cointel Pro, that should definitely be taught because when black people were organizing in this country, right? When you had people like H. Rap Brown, right? Kwame Ture, when when you had the Black Panther Party, when you had Malcolm, X, when you had all these great revolutionaries, right? 
Cointel Pro, which was created by the FBI, they infiltrated many organizations. They dis- discredited the black leaders, right? They wrote they uh, uh, wrote false letters about them. They would start infighting, right? Start uh, issues within the um, different organizations that have infighting. They falsely arrested a lot of the leaders and threw them in jail for lengthy prison sentences. And the others, they assassinated. Okay? So I I feel it's definitely important in African-American history to learn about COINTELPRO so our young black boys and girls that are coming up know how the government work anytime you ask for your liberation. Okay, that should definitely be in there. Why is no one saying that? I don't know, but it should definitely be in there. Now. So I have to say this, I have to say this. There is this and I and and, and when this whole thing came out with the governor, I watch different YouTube channels, different podcasts. To just to get an idea of, of how people were thinking, where they was coming from. It didn't matter, you know, if the person was white, black. I was just getting, you know, I, I just like to listen and see what, you know, others are thinking and how they feel. And there is this one channel that I actually watch. I respect. I, I love. I love, you know, the commentator, you know, um, on there. Um, it's called the, uh, the African Diaspora News Channel. Great channel. Uh, most of the things that they say on there, I agree with. And I watched when one of the reporters were on there. His um, name is uh, Philip Scott. And again, that's my brother. I never met him before, but that's my brother. I love him and I support him and I don't want him thinking that I'm coming at him. But there was something he said in there because they got a big platform. But there was something he said in there that I didn't agree with. And I and, and when I read some of the comments on their page, a lot of people were saying the same thing. And I said, nah, this has to be corrected. You know, and again, and I say this with love to my brother and I offer you the invite to come on, you know, to, 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 to come on here. I'm giving you, you know, invite to come on here. Or if I come on there, we can have a, a peaceful, uh, positive dialogue. All right. So don't, he was talking about this, the African-American uh, history course, and he was basically said he agreed with the governor at, you know, to, to basically deny this course. So he started talking about a few things that he disagreed with. Now. He get he talks about the pan-Africanism and the black internationalism, and he basically says, uh, I don't know why in the African-American studies course you talking about the Afro-Caribbean migration, right? This is what he says. I'll read that again. This is Philip Scott. I don't know why in an African-American studies course you're talking about the Afro-Caribbean migration. Even though I know people did migrate here, why do we need to focus on that? So he doesn't feel, or it seems to me that he doesn't agree that in an African American, which means African people history American, why are we talking about Africans in other locations, right? <sighs> this hurts me because the brother's smart, very smart. So I'm like, nah, was he just? He, he was. He was joking. He was being sarcastic. He wasn't. He wasn't serious. But I, uh, apparently, it seemed like he was serious. So here's the thing. He doesn't see why we need to focus on that. As a Pan-Africanist, you know unification is the goal. You said that just, you, you talked about uh, uh, Mosiah Marcus Garvey. Unification is the goal. An African in America is an African. An African in the Caribbean is an African. An African in Canada is an African. An African in uh, South America is an African. An Africa in, in Europe is a, is an African. An African in China is an African. Just because 
we are one different, you know, we are in different uh, geographical locations does not mean that we're not Africans. And I'm not saying he said that he didn't say that, but I'm just saying it for the people that are watching and their experience is our experience in order to build African people up. We all have to be in unison and we all have to help Africa. All right. Now. He talks about the migration and different things like that and, and why are we learning about African Caribbeans. All right. Now, just I did a, a quick Google search, just a quick. I didn't really want to really go on my bag too much because I don't want to make it seem like I'm feuding with my brother or, or trying to disrespect him. I just wanted to go over some things that he might not know. So I wanted to talk about that. So. Even if you just go to Google, just put in Google and you put a, and you go into the page of the National Endowment, you know, um, whatever page. So it talks about and I'm going to post it. You can see identity and connections among African, Afro-Caribbean and African-American communities in the world. So it's, it's saying a connection. Identity and connection could be. It's everything. Cultural connection. All right. And that's just a little it, this this page is just like a little paragraph. Right. Just a little just a little paragraph talking about it. And then if you go on Google again, you could go somewhere and you could just um, talk about uh, uh, basically because I was um, if you type in the six Caribbean revolutionaries in U.S. black history, six Caribbean revolutionaries in u.s black history and you can see right the black the afro-caribbean people that came to america to spark a revolution in the people he already said marcus garvey he already said that right malcolm x right although he was born here his his parents were garveyites right his his family is from the Caribbean. Minister Louis Farrakhan, although he was born here, his family migrated here from the Caribbean. Some of the, the most powerful revolutionary minds came from the Caribbean, those Afro-Caribbeans, which sparked revolution. Frederick Douglass, when he talk about the bright example. OK. He was telling African American people here in the country about the Haiti, the Haitian Revolution, the, the Haitian Rebellion. And was sparking the people here in America, the African people here in America. OK. Now. If you wanted me to talk about. um. Other little things I could talk about that as well. The, the first black owned newspaper, right? That was that was talking about revolutionary mind state, right? Revolutionary action, liberation was Afro Caribbean people that came here, migrated here. Har the Renaissance of Harlem, the contributions that the Afri that the Afro Caribbean people brung to made Harlem to, to what it would to, to what it was. I mean, I, I, I'm I'm not really even trying to really go on my bag like that, because, again, I, it's just just little things like that. Now, let me talk about this now. In a video, I talk about Cuba, right? And I talk about how Cuba. Has a program. And I want you all to listen to it. Cuba has a program where if you are a black American, if you are a African American, right? And if you want to come to Cuba, which is Caribbean and islands, if you want to come to Cuba to get into the medical field, you can come to Cuba, get free room and board get money right and come to school for free 
the only thing that they ask of black of of African Americans is that after you get your degree, you go back and you serve your community. I just had to put that out there. Now I know you're gonna say that has nothing to do with, you know, he might feel like that has nothing to do, and that might not have nothing to do with migration, but that does say something about why we need to learn about these Caribbean countries that are basically empowering African Americans here. That's what it says. But now, if you want to talk about again migration, cool. Let's talk about that. But let's. But now let. But now let's flip it a little bit. Okay, it's bigger than Eno Brown, Mister Scott. It's bigger than Eno Brown. You, my brother, I love you. Okay. Now, during this uh, the Spanish War, right? Spanish American War, right? I was just talking about how black people were allowed to go to Cuba, but there was a program, right? There was a program where Afro Cubans, Afro Cubans, where America had a program, United States of America had a program where they accepted Afro Cubans to migrate to America to go to Tuskegee University to become to get trades. This is a fact. I, I, I think this program maybe lasted about 15, 20 years, I, I think. But they, but the United States of America had a program where they would accept Afro-Cubans to migrate to go to school at Tusk, you know, Tuskegee University. And these Afro-Cubans picked up trades and, ha and helped out the African Americans within the communities in America. Do you want? Um, I, I could, I could, I could start going in my bag. I could really start going in my bag. It, but again, I just wanted to highlight a few things just off the fly. Okay, so I just wanted to again. It's just I just wanted to put that out there just in case if he wasn't aware. Uh, uh, Philip Scott wasn't aware. Again, that's my brother. I love my brother, and. You know, I just had to put that out there. But, um, you know, if anybody, again, it's the right people agree to disagree. They might not agree with um, my take on uh, the the um, feminist movement. It's cool. They might not agree on other things I say. That's cool, too. But I'm always going to st stand 10 toes down and, and speak on, on, on my truth. So I want to thank you guys for uh, watching another video. Thank you guys for tuning in to It's Just Different with Ty. You know, again, please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you can get updated on all the videos. All right. So I see you guys on the next video. Peace and love.